Hi everyone, welcome back to another Shiny Bright Doggo video. But today it's Solo Laura. I am going out to an estate sale today and Janine is not joining me. You know, if you've seen our video, she's over it early mornings. I don't blame her, but I saw something in this listing that I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go early, I'm gonna do the whole shebang, you know? The estate sales that we go to are quite competitive in our area. A lot of the times they are digger sales where we can just dig through the entire contents of the home, make a big pile, make a deal. Um, and it's been a while since I've seen a listing with something as exciting as this. I don't even know if Janine knows like why I'm going to the sale. I tend not to tell her because I'm not sure if she's gonna come or not. And then like, I don't wanna, so like, I was like, I'm gonna handle this one on my own today. And that's exactly what we're doing. It is early, 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 but the sale is really close, close enough that I was able to score number three. So we're gonna wait outside for a little bit. We're gonna go in. I think that the sale is going to be pretty competitive, like I said, and I think I'm going to not film at first just so that I can be focused on, you know, finding the things that I, I'm going to the sale for um, and then of course I will show you guys the house and some of the other stuff you know I'm, I'm thinking that there's going to be a good amount of stuff so I'll take you guys along and then you're going to want to stick around to the end hopefully fingers crossed we walk away with a good haul so let's go to this estate sale and this oh I didn't even mention it's a beautiful beautiful home like this is a giant house it's gorgeous it's definitely a million dollar home in this area and it looks like a time capsule so how often do you come across a million dollar home that's a time capsule at an estate sale not very often so i'm excited happy to bring you guys along and let's head into the sale but before we do that we just want to remind everyone that we're having a halloween whatnot sale this sunday august 13th at 7 15 p.m eastern standard time this is some of the stuff that we will be selling we might you know throw in a couple extra things definitely some giveaways we are going to have all of these items that range from the 70s the 80s and the 90s some of our favorite decades of halloween to collect and share with you guys maybe even a little bit older we have some older pumpkin pails mm -hmm. some older cake toppers just a really fun mix there's definitely going to be something there for everyone no matter what you collect so it's definitely going to be a fun sale So I got number three and I'm waiting here for the doors to open. This is a mansion, guys. This is a beautiful million dollar home and we're gonna go in and see what's inside. Now, I, at this point, had basically shopped the entire sale. It was pretty competitive. Um, there was stuff spread out throughout the entire house. As you can see, this one room had an amazing collection of dolls. The holiday was in different places and this wasn't quite a digger sale where we had to go, or I had to go digging through boxes. Everything was pretty much laid out visible for the most part. Um, so it was a bit of a frenzy to go in and grab what you could find and spot right away. But I love these dolls in particular. I know they have a certain name. They were made in Japan. They were marked $20 each. I was really tempted, but I knew I had a lot of really good stuff in my bag. Um, so I wanted to price that out before I purchased anything else. The princess and the goblin reminded me of Janine. Janine is the princess and she loves her goblins, but I left that behind. I did spot that little coloring book, Cindy and Mindy in the back, but I left that behind because I spotted an entire section of children's books. Janine and I really love to look at children's books. Um, I particularly like to pick up anything that's um, Christmas, holiday themed, or just something that catches my eye, like this little lost angel book. Um, these are pretty resellable. You know, I think this would have been a great deal for somebody who does a flea market to come in and grab the whole box um, or a collector, right? If a collector happened upon this because the prices were okay. You know, it's amazing the prices at estate sales over the last few years um, compared to when I started going to estate sales about five years ago or so. They've just like really increased. Um, but in our area and for the type of estate sales that we go to, going to these sales are still the best deal. Um, because a lot of these companies that we go to do bundle deals. So even if individual items are marked or priced, you can happen upon a bunch of books that are unmarked, you know, and they'll give you a really good deal if you pick up a bunch of them. 
At the sale, I didn't capture the footage, but I did come across some really unique holiday children's books and coloring books, and I can't wait to show you guys. So definitely stick around to the end of the video if you want to see what I grabbed. There's quite a good amount of stuff here, some really unique pieces, and I think I did pretty well. Um, there's also this really cool piece, which I did see in the pictures of the sale. And this is a giant Santa with a honeycomb belly, but he's extremely moldy. He was really moldy, almost wet to the touch. I could not pick him up because of that. I really loved him. It was really cool to see him, but unfortunately he had to be left. I'm now making my way down the stairs into the basement. Um, and this was an interesting home because I could tell that the family most likely went through a lot of their belongings. Um, digger sales, you usually find like all the contents of the house, like anything in a home you can imagine. Whereas this one was a little bit sparse. Um, it was more laid out. There wasn't as many things as I would have expected to see if the house was literally left untouched, which does happen at some estate sales. This one, I think it was a bit cleaned out. Things were gone through before the sale, which is totally fine. You know, it just makes for a different sale. Um, this was the Christmas section in the basement. I had come down here later and there wasn't too much here, but I really loved those skating boxes. I thought those would have been really cool for display. Um, but not anything here that I picked up in particular. I did spot this wooden nativity, which I thought was nice. Marked 40, but Joseph was missing an arm, so that didn't come with me. There were also a ton of boxes of ornaments. I did not pick up any ornaments. We just have so many, but there were definitely some really nice ones in the mix if you dug through the boxes. I did come across a strand of garland that I did pick up, so that was pretty cool. But on the other side of the basement was this really cool window filled with green bottles. There was tons of them. Um, and they even had all the big promotional, you know, alcohol bottles, which were really cool and collectible. Um, but this was really cool to see. Nothing that Janine and I know too much about to resell, but definitely fun to look at. There were a number of rooms and bedrooms upstairs. Um, and as you can see, it's a little empty. Things are sort of displayed, so it wasn't quite a digger, but still really fun. I found these handkerchiefs and doilies that I went through. Um, when I'm looking at these, again, I'm looking for Christmas ones. If you guys have never seen Christmas handkerchiefs from the 60s and 50s, they are quite amazing. They're very collectible and they're sort of hard to come by. In this closet, I came across some really amazing dresses um, that were kept in the family over the years from the 60s. There's a graduation gown in there. I believe there was even a communion gown. They were really nice. I especially love this pink one with all the detailing. So cool. It's, you know, they've been kept over the years really nicely and preserved, which is just great to see. A collector would definitely like to pick these up or somebody who resells clothing, but I just thought it was fun to see. In this next room, um, there were some older plush, which of course I had to take a look at. There was this little poodle with a hat, which I absolutely loved so cute and then i found these bunnies really intriguing i was trying to figure out what they were since they had these little like attachments and i think they're hot water bottle holders you guys let me know if i'm right or not i make my way down the room and there were some other plush homemade looking on the floor and i came across this really cute advent calendar unfortunately she was a bit too worn for my liking she was very creased and so i left her behind there were a ton of books at this sale. A lot of them were like historical stories, but they were just all over the house. Everywhere I turned, there was a book. So I did spend some time looking through these shelves. Um, again, for anything that was like horror or Halloween, spooky related, or just books I liked. I think I even came across an Alice in Wonderland, but I don't think I picked it up. You guys will have to see, but I then came across these like army tanks and trucks. I thought they were metal at first, but they were actually plastic. So I'm not sure how old they are. And then these really cool record players. They were only like 10 and $15 each, which I think is fair. In the downstairs room, they had these really cool sewing machines. I don't know if they're, I, I believe they're functional. I wasn't sure if they were miniatures or not, but they seemed a little big to be miniatures. I think they actually worked as sewing machines, which is really cool. And then in this last room, there were more books. I had also already gone through these books, but I was doing a second check. It was all Bobsy Twins books, <laughs> which I've never heard of before. I think even that clock book in the back is the two of them. I guess they were really popular in the 50s and 60s maybe, but I had never heard of them. And then of course I had to go take a look at the kitchen. 
this mid-century kitchen is pretty original. They might have swapped out the cabinets at some point, but look at this oven, guys, with all those buttons and the dials. Super cool. And take a look at this hood. It looks like it was taken right off of a car from the 1960s. And this intercom was one thing that I had to capture. New tone, super retro. Okay, guys, we are out. We're out, and I have a friend with me. Maybe more than a friend, but she's here. And we're, I'm going to show Janine um, everything I got. And I'm going to show you guys. And Janine, do you know why I went to the sale? Do you have, did you see the pictures? Do you have any idea? Do you, do you know? Do you? Well, let me think. It's either It either has to be um, Christmas or Halloween. <laughs> yeah, but that's not what I mean. I mean, like, do you know what was in the pictures? Do you know specifically why? Specifically? Not really. I know, I know there was, there was Halloween there. Okay. That's all I know. But specific reason? No, I don't know why. All right, guys. Let, let's dig in. All right, Janine. I want to show you. Come on. Put the drink down. It's time. Bring it. Yeah, bring it. It's a hot day. <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on. I got to show you something. She's going to come. Maybe I should put the drink down. Should I put the drink down? Yeah, I got some stuff here that I don't want to get <laughs> wet. Okay. All right, come All right. come here. Ready? Yeah, I'm not going to look. Wait, let me show everybody first, and then I'll show you. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Here it is. Okay. Okay, Janine, turn around. Oh, my God. You got actual vintage Halloween. Some real vintage Halloween. <gasps> finally. You got two? <laughs> what? You got two. And they, they well, both have the... Slow okay, your roll. Uh, slow your roll, kiddo. Okay. But yeah, I did get some actual real vintage Halloween. It's been something? so long. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I say something? Say. Okay, I just want to say something really quick. A lot of times when you find these um, Rosbro candy containers, like, I think they're called like Queen or something. I forget what it is. They don't have both ears. Mm -hmm. I actually have one in the collection. It only has one ear. And um, a lot of times when you do see them on eBay, they only have one ear. And I'm seeing that you have two and they both have ears. We've got all four ears here. What? So yeah, this is the whole spread. Okay. So like- Impressive. A good amount considering, yeah, I know in the footage, like I didn't show any of this, but it all came out of that house and I paid $175 for all of it. Wow thoughts i think that's pretty pretty good i'm i'm like trying to like look at like the the spread like i'm really excited about a few the things die cuts? yeah wow oh my goodness the books yep so this was all the halloween die cuts they had and everything was laid out they're between like 10 to 20 dollars each but i mean janine look what we have here these wow. four these four die cuts are lures, which are super collectible, and none of these have been punched out. They are in great, fantastic condition. Wow, that is amazing. These are from the 1950s, right, Janine? Maybe 1960s? And you just don't find them anymore. So those were the die cuts. Also, this really fun skeleton guy. His little arms come out. These are the ones that are like called dancers, dancers. or something. Mm -hmm. I think we have one. In yeah, the we have right? him. He's not in as good condition. Wow. Um, so yeah, their little legs are accordions, and it's just and the so fun. The tissue paper is so white. Yeah, nice. everything in this house was like in really great condition, very well taken care of. Um, I'm really curious about that. Is that a book? Yeah. I was really excited to come across this. It was actually with all the, um, oh, I'm forgetting, Bobsy Twins books. Um, because this is just okay, a really... I've heard Bobsy Twins. Yeah, there's a whole, like, piles of them. But this was in that same room, and uh, it's a really, really sweet children's book. Christmas wow. children's book, which are really collectible. I think this comes all the way out. Oh, can I see the little kitten? Sorry, I just saw a little kitten. Cute. Oh, wow. This is probably from the 50s, 60s. Really sweet. Very unique. If I were to guess, very collectible. I've never seen this one before. That's really cool. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I've never seen this book before. It is so cool. And it's actually from 1957. There's the date on it. 
Wow, it's really sweet. The illustrations are really, really beautiful. The glitter on it is still there. Yeah. That's amazing. This was a really exciting find. I want to show you another really exciting find that I was not expecting at all. Ready, Janine? Yes. I found a whole tower. Oh! I thought that was Napco just now. This is a whole towered bell. Hard to find. Um, it is marked whole towered on the bottom. This was one of the like things. Would you believe it? Wow, I, I couldn't you. believe it. It was on a windowsill. They definitely didn't know what this was. It would have been marked. Um, so I was really lucky to have found this. I thought these go for like $60 on eBay. And I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you. It's a bell. It is a bell. Little bell. The clapper might have been replaced. I can't tell. Huh. Looks like it maybe have, but yeah, I last I checked eBay like a few years ago, these were going for like 60-ish dollars. The most recent one sold for like $125 on eBay. For that? For this one. Wow. If you guys don't know, if you're new to the channel in the past few months and you haven't seen my vintage Christmas ceramic collection, this is what I collect. So I might have to hold on to this one. It's just so cute. Whole Towered is a super, super collectible vintage Christmas um, company to look out for. This one's no exception. So I was super excited to find this. And then, I mean, what else do we want to talk about? I think it was a great haul. Um, we have this pumpkin pail. That one's cool. This one is really cool. Probably from the 70s. Um, there's no maker's mark on him. But also, what's inside of it? Okay, so I picked up a strand of garland beaded glass garland very pretty very pretty multicolor multicolor but there is a jar in it that i cannot get out so i think we're going to use a little bit of dawn to try to wiggle that out otherwise we're breaking it like this is coming out it's not staying in there we're not breaking the pail we're breaking <laughs> we're breaking the we're glass, breaking glass. <laughs> um i don't know if we have this one unless someone in the comments says that this is a very rare mason jar <laughs> that we should actually <laughs> keep <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you know, but I don't think so. Um, I don't think we have this one in the collection, but we may pass this one along. Super surprised to see this. And if you guys are new to the channel as well, like Janine and I love vintage Halloween. Um, we look out for those pumpkin pails year round. Our little motto here at Shiny Bright Doggo is no, no pumpkin, pumpkin left, left behind. behind. And <laughs> that wasn't rehearsed. <laughs> I thought you were just having me say it. And then when you started <laughs> saying no it. No pumpkin left behind. <laughs> and... Um, that pail is no exception. So we just love the vintage pails. They're pretty collectible. Um, just something to note. Cute. Is that a, what is that? Is that a book? So the shiny star is a book. A lot of the times. I don't know if you. What? What? Star polish. And that, like the, it's the shiny. Yeah. Like, let's, let's take a look. Polishing the stars. A lot of these like really nice vintage children's books came in boxes and they were like spiral bound. But yes, star polish, and this would have probably had a reflective, like, shiny material on it at some point. Oh, really sweet. Oh, how exciting is that? I love these. I mean, the illustrations, a lot of them were pop-ups. We'll have to read it. We'll have I'm to, so for sure. It's really sweet. Look, there's a little fish in here, a whistle. It must have broken over the years, but how fun is that? So the shiniest star was one, and then I also came across this um, snowman, snowman one. Do you think that had been in a box too? Like the shiny snowman, the shiniest star? Possibly. Would have been, maybe it would have been in its own little box. It might have. It did at some point, I think, have some type of thing on his nose. There's like tape residue, but I just noticed there's like a punch out there. Oh. So. Maybe it came with... Um, something there something right to play with and then this one is an amazing pop-up as well these are just so fun oh my goodness look at that i love it um these are really collectible too these can resell really nicely but i have a problem with these i really like them i might have to keep this one too look at him oh so that was a great find too these two were really great what else, Janine? I came across some coloring books, just some really nice Christmas coloring books. They are a bit older. And some um, spooky books. Yes, we've got Ghost, Ghost Town, Town Treasure. Treasure. And I found Little Witch. Wow. Yep. 
I picked up some little Santas over there and angels. They were just hanging out on um, one of the, I guess, cabinets in the living rooms. Um, but yeah, I just want to iterate like how amazing these die cuts are. They're getting so hard to find. And in this condition, Janine? They're in really, really good shape. They're brand new. I don't think there's any even pinholes or anything where they were like pinned or anything, right? It's just... I don't think so. You always find this one with the top broken off. Yeah. They're just... They're in really great shape. So fun and cool. And they don't smell like musty or no. like old paper, you know, has that gross kind of smell. They're mm -hmm. in really good shape, which is really kind of hard to find at an estate sale at least. Mm-hmm. These are lures. They are marked, made in USA. And you could always tell they're authentic when they are one-sided. You could just tell that they're vintage. So amazing. And then I think the last thing we need to discuss, Janine, I mean, we, talk, you, you, we talked about it for a second, but we've got the queens in the car. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, there's actually three queens in the picture right oh, now. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is the reason I went to the estate sale and I woke up so early were for these Rosbro Queen pumpkin pails. Now they do have considerable rust to the handles, but at least they have their ears is what I thought. Um, these are from the 1950s, maybe 1960s. They're and super collectible. Other than the rusty handle, they're in fantastic shape. There's no cracks. They will have both ears. Their crown isn't broken. It's amazing. They are so great. Um, I don't think we're going to keep two queenies, so we'll most likely pass one along. Um, but I just had to have them. You know, when you see that picture in that estate sale and you're like, I have to have it, this was that. But all in all, it was a really successful estate sale. I got a lot more than I was expecting to. The die cuts were not in the picture. I paid up a little bit, but I think in today's market, it's wild. Estate sale prices have gone up, everything's gone up, so I think I still got a really good deal. And it was amazing to see like a million dollar home that was also a time capsule. Like everything in there was vintage. So it was a great, fun time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Janine, I hope you're proud of my haul. I am definitely. And don't a forget. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also wanted to say, don't forget that we have our Halloween whatnot sale this Sunday. So in like two days at 7.15 Eastern Standard, we're going to have some really fun stuff. We're going to have a fun time overall. And I hope you guys join us. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us today. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.